as he was saying, we could complicate this, this given scenario number two even more if we say, if we added to that and say, you know, we, we think for our environment and for my forage resource, my cows are too big and giving too much milk. Then, then there's some other EPDs and selection criteria that might come in there. Well, you're gonna ask, well, how, how in the hell can a cow give too milk? Because milk's directly related to weaning weight, isn't it? If I'm selling my calves at weaning, yes, milk production is related to weaning weights, but just like anything else in life, there is a point of diminishing returns where each additional incremental increase in weaning weight takes too much milk and too much energy that that cow to consume, too much feed, too much forage to cover the cost of that additional pound of weaning weight, okay? There's a point of diminishing returns. As Dr. Johnson said, if we stay away from the extremes, most often, somewhere in the middle of the road probably fits most situations the majority of the time. We, we can always say there are exceptions, but measure, know what your benchmarks are so that you know which way you need to move the needle for any given trait. We might want to know, we might want a mature weight EPD if we think we need to move the mature weight on our cows down, if we think we've got too much cost in our cows. We might want to know some breed associations, Angus for example, has a heifer pregnancy, HPEPD, which is simply a prediction of how, to what degree, how well that sire's daughters will cycle and conceive under your normal management practices, okay? But let me back up again and give a little more context. As we look at Bull C and his dollar W of 61, all that's telling you, it's not telling you that if you buy this bull, he's gonna add $61 to every calf you wean. What it's telling you is that in comparison to these other bull, uh, that $61 is in comparison to the average bull of the Angus breed, correct, Mark? Okay, Just the average. And, and assuming that they're mated to the same females, okay? It can't compare bull A mated to this set of cows and bull B mated to this set of cows. Mated to the same cows, that $61 compared to the average of the Angus breed. Well then, once we know we can compare two individuals, so bull A is 50 and as, as Dr. Johnson said, contextually, he's he's gonna add $11 more than bull A for each wing calf that I said. All right, let's look at scenario number three. We're looking for a bull to use on a mature cow herd. And we're gonna sell the offspring as yearling. Let's just to say Oklahoma, a common scenario would be spring calving cows. We wean them in October. We precondition them for a few weeks and then we kick them to wheat pasture. We sell them the following spring as yearlings. What selection criteria, what, what general set of collection cr criteria is gonna be important to me? Is it, or am I gonna worry about the maternal traits? I'm not keeping any replacements, I'm selling everything as yearlings. So what am I gonna be concerned with? Essentially yearling weight. It's gonna be the single uh, economically significant trait that I wanna focus on for this scenario. That's what I'm doing. I'm not keeping any replacement females, anything else. Uh, that's not to say that something else in here like scrotal circumference wouldn't have significance. Why would it have significance? It almost always does, and why? Absolutely, fertility. Not only that sire's fertility and his ability, and the quantity and quality of semen he produces, how many females he's able to cover and settle, uh, but if you were in a scenario like the last scenario where you're keeping replacement heifers, there's a direct positive correlation between a bull scrotal circumference and the fertility of his daughters. So, almost always important. So under this scenario, we look down, Bull East got a yearling weight EPD of plus 128. Now again, that's not telling you he's gonna add 128 pounds to your yearling weights. It's gonna tell you, it's telling you if I compare him to Bull D right above him at 109, that I've got, he's gonna produce 
my calves out of bull E are going to weigh about 19 pounds more yearling on average than the calves out of bull D. That's what it's telling you. Scenario four, same set of cows, same scenario, except now, if you'll notice on your, your bulls, same Angus bull with a ringer thrown in. I've got the opportunity, my neighbor's got a Charlotte bull that he wants to sell me. I've seen the bull phenotypically, visually, he, he, I like the bull, but how do I compare him to these Angus bulls? It's a different breed. You can't compare his Charlotte EPDs to the Angus EPDs unless you, you utilize the crossbreed EPD adjustment factors, okay? Meat Animal Research Center in Clay Center, Nebraska for many, many years has collected data on many, many different breeds. And they have indexed them against the other breeds and they've come up with these, what they call a crossbreed EPDs. Beef Improvement Federation posts those every year, updates them every year. You can Google and uh, find that across breed EPDs. But what it does, it gives you some ability to compare bulls of different breeds and put them on a somewhat equal footing, okay? So if you go back, I think on page eight of your notes, it talks about a cross breed EPD adjustment factors. And it gives an example, what's it, Charlet across, what's the adjustment factor for yearling weight on uh, Charlet's versus Angus, compared to Angus. Angus is the base, 23.2. So what that's telling us is that to compare a Charlet bull to an Angus bull, we need to add 23.2 to his EPD, yearling weight EPD. So. Uh, in scenario four, if we look at the Charlet bull, bull D, he has a yearling weight EPD, a Charlet yearling weight EPD of what? 109. We can't compare that to the Angus until we use that adjustment factor of plus 23.2. So if we add 23.2 to that 109, we come up with a 132.2. Now we can compare them, okay? Does that make sense? Now we can compare them. Okay, there are adjustment factors for every breed and there's a table in there that lists those. So you can somewhat put bulls of different breeds on equal footing and again, assuming you're mating them to the same cow herd, same females. Now, the question was asked in the previous group, really good question, well, what if I'm, uh, considering a Hereford bull versus a Charlet bull. Well, the Angus is the base, okay? So we've got to compare both of them to the base, get the adjustment factor, and then subtract those two adjustment factors, okay? Adjustment factor for the Charlet on the Angus, adjustment factor for the Hereford on the Angus, and the difference.